Hello, so today we'll be solving the 2015 second session EGU pa past paper for mathematics. We'll be doing course one, basic course, and section two, question one. As before, we have finished section one. So here is section two. So let's have a read. Consider the expression in x. So piece of function of x equals as such. We are to find the range of real numbers a such that the value of p is minimized at x equals a. First, let us note that the inequality, this, always holds and is an, in and is a, an equality in the case where x equals a. What it means is that if uh, x equals a, then over here x, e x minus a would be uh, a minus a, which is 0. So this won't exist. So as you can see, this part and this part is the same, therefore equality is held at x equals a. So when we set y equals this, we have this. So let's just focus on this first. Basically, what they want us to do is that since the x minus 1 and x minus 2 expressions are in absolute value, they can take different forms at different values of x. So we want to study all the different conditions for the value of x, because each condition gives a different uh, expression for y. All right, so there's not much space here, so I'm just gonna come down here. First, I'll write down the... Okay, now before we continue to solving it, I just wanna note one thing. For absolute values, let's say absolute value of x here. If the x is less than zero, then its absolute value will be equal to minus x. If the x is bigger than or equal to zero, the absolute value would be equal to x. For example, if x equals two, then uh, absolute value, sorry, if then the absolute value of 2 is 2. But if x is negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 would be minus minus 2, which is 2. As such here, minus minus 2, which is like minus x. So let's use that. So for x minus 1 here, so if x minus 1 is less than 0, then absolute value would be negative x minus 1. And if it is bigger, it would just be x minus 1. And same goes for x minus 2. Negative x minus 2. So let's just keep these conditions in mind. The two important values here are 1 and 2. So let's draw a number line. This number line represents the value for x. If here is 0, let this place be oh, sorry, 1 and this is 2. So we can study the values of, of x for uh, this part, which is x less than 1. This part, which is 1, which is x is in between 1 and 2. And this part, which is x is bigger than 2. So let us study the, let us study the first condition. If x is less than 1. Well, if x is less than 1, that's just like saying x minus 1 is less than 0. That's just like saying x minus 1 is less than 0. From this, we can easily say that the absolute value of x minus 1 will become uh, minus x minus 1, which is equal to minus x plus 1. We can minus both sides by 1. We've got x minus 2 less than negative 1, which is less than 0. Therefore, absolute value of x minus 2 would be minus minus x plus 2. So from here, since we know this, we can substitute this back into y. Therefore, we have y equals negative x plus 1 minus x plus 2, which is uh, minus 2x plus 3. So this is, so if x is uh, less than 1, then this expression here would equal to minus 2x plus 3. So let's study the second one, the second condition here, if x is in between 1 and 2. x is in between 1 and... So if x is in between 1 and 2, so we can divide this, this inequality into two, to, to two parts. Uh, we can say 1 is that uh, x is uh, bigger than or equal to 1, and x is less than or equal to 2. And then we can also rewrite this as x minus 1 bigger than or equal to 0, x minus 2 less than or equal to 0. 
So from here, I think you know what to do now. If since uh, x minus one is bigger than equal to zero, then the absolute value of x minus one would be x minus one. Since x minus two is less than or equal to zero, then the uh, absolute value of x minus two would be um, minus x minus two. But, but then you may ask, well, x minus two equals zero. Well, if x minus two uh, equals zero, you know, you would get negative zero, which is still zero. So it doesn't really matter. All right, so we take these two, well, this is the expression. We substitute that back into this equation. And we will get y equals x minus one minus x plus two equal to one. So y equals one. And the last condition is if x is bigger than two which is like writing x minus two bigger than zero. Therefore, we can say absolute value here is equal to x minus two. And if we add both sides by positive one, so x minus one bigger than one, which one is bigger than zero. So we can say that x absolute value here would be x minus one. And therefore the y, uh, y would be x minus 2 plus x minus 1 equals to x minus 3. Here we completed all three conditions. So here, the first condition, if x is less than 1, then our y value, here if x is less than 1, our y value would be negative 2x plus 3. Negative 2x plus 3. Second condition, if, if x is in between 1 and 2, y value will be equal to 1. So here is in between 1 and 2, y value would be 1. Third is if x is bigger than 2, this will be our y value here. So bigger than 2, the y value is 2x minus 3. Right, so we finished the major part now. Let's read. When we consider the graph of one, we see that the minimum value of y is h. Takes the value in between. Okay, basically, we need to draw the graph to understand what's going on. Let's take what we got here. Okay, so let's just write down the important parts. We could say here that y, negative 2x plus 3, when x is less than 1, it equals to 1 when x is in between 2 and 1. And it equals to 2x minus 3 if x is bigger than 2. So let's just draw the graph for y. We know here that y is essentially a function of x. So let's draw a very simple graph here. You don't have to draw it perfectly, just get the idea of the graph. Okay, so let's mark the important values. We have 1 and 2. So one graph would be located here and the graph that's located here would be 2 minus 2x plus 3. Another graph would be located in between 1 and 2 which is equal to 1 that y equals 1 f of x equals 1 and the last graph would be on this side when x is bigger than 2 which would be 2x minus 3. So let's just have a look at minus 2x plus 3 for a bit. This is a linear function, so it will be a line. And as you can see, uh, its gradient is negative. So the line should be going, oh, sorry, so the line should be going down like this. So it's a straight line going down like this. Okay, cool. So let's assume that for x equals one. So let's take a look at this function here, minus two x plus three. So if f, if f equals to one, you would get minus two plus three, which is equal to one, which means that for this, for this graph here, at x equals one, its y value would be one. So essentially, it would be a line, let me get pink here, a line going down and it ends here. Uh, y equals one when x is in between one and two. So when x equals one and two, uh, y value is always one. So as you can see, if, uh, if you took an x value here, the y value is still one. If you took it here, it's still one. That's what it means, basically. If x is bigger than two, function is two x minus three. So we know that this is a linear function again, and 
its gradient is positive. Therefore, it, uh, it would be a straight line going up like this. Let's assume that, let's say x equals 2. If x equals 2, f of 2, you would get 4 minus 3, which is 1. So the graph would essentially start here as well, and it would go up. Now, if you draw this perfectly, uh, these two graphs should go up and down at the same but opposite rate. Okay, so let's go back to the question now. We see that the minimum value of y is h. So the minimum value of this graph is over here. Its minimum value then would be 1. h would be equal to 1. And takes the value h at every x satisfying. So this graph takes the value 1. y equals 1 when x is in between 1 and 2, as we wrote here. So then this would simply be 1 and 2. So i is 1, j is 2. Let me just make that clear. i is 1 and j is 2. Now we come to the inter uh, interesting part here. Thus, for every a satisfying this, the value of p is minimized at x equals a, and its value there is m. All right. This may have caught people off guard because you were just doing this equation thing, and then suddenly, uh, you, like you already forgot that you forgot that this this p existed. I I forgot too that it existed, and now they're asking you something about p. So let's bring p back here. Let's just write it. Let me erase this. So p equals x minus 1, x minus 2, and absolute value of x minus a. Okay. Now let's read this carefully. Thus, for every a, okay, every a satisfying a, in between two values, the value of p is minimized. Read this, minimized at x equals a. x equals a, x equals a. So what happens when x equals a? If x equals a, therefore p would be this value because you know x minus a is zero so this won't exist anymore now what does this look like p would equal this which means p equals to this y which means p would be this graph so that means that when the value p is minimized at x equals a minimized at x equals a so Read this carefully, x equals a. So if x equals a, that's like saying a is equal to x. And with that, it, it means that this value p here is minimized when the is minimized over here. I hope this makes sense here because uh, this p, you, you can uh, it's represented by x and it has the same equation as the y here. So if it is minimized at x equals a, then it would mean that for the value of a that is in between 1 and 2, because since, since x equals a, we can also say uh, a equals x. So that's like saying if a is in between 1 and 2, it's exactly the same way as saying if x is in between 1 and 2. Then p would be minimized, which makes total sense. Look at the graph. It is minimized and its value would be 1. So the answer here is if a is in between 1 and 2, uh, the value of p is minimized at x equals a and its value there is 1. I know this, this part can be a bit confusing, but basically just understand that when p is minimized at x equals a, then p is equal to this. And when it's minimized, this is its minimum value. So uh, the x value needs to be in between 1 and 2. But since x equals a, that's also like saying a is in between 1 and 2. So this is our answer. And this is the minimum value. So that's it. Thank you.